A few months ago, Blizzard let everyone vote on next season's tier sets. And now the voting is over, we're going to be ranking the biggest winners and losers based on the results, and then predict how the meta might be changing next season. And when it does, you can count on skill cap to get you the rating you've always wanted in season 4. There has never been a better time to be a skill cap member, with over 250 hours worth of on-demand content that teaches you everything you need to rank up. Skill cap members can even enjoy premium Discord perks, including monthly VOD reviews, one-on-one -on -one support, and access to one of the best PvP UI profiles. Everything is backed up by our rank up guarantee, where we promise you will gain rating just by using our service. So, what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted, and check out the links below for an exclusive discount offer. First up is Frosty K, who are getting their tier set from Season 2. Overall, this is an improvement from this season, especially with the returning 4 set, which increases crit damage by 20%, and like every other tier set we will cover, this should be getting the standard 50% PvP modifier. We should also note that almost every returning tier set is actually getting buffed, which for Frosty K includes buffs to every part of the 2 set bonus. Now, despite this, we really don't think Frosty K will suddenly shoot up a tier. After all, the spec is still going to be pretty clunky by design, revolving around gimmicky one minute setups and then kiting in between, all while being one of the squishiest melee in the game. But if you are a Frosty K, you probably like doing big damage, and since their tier set will give you even bigger burst, it is definitely a winner. Up next is Balance Druid, who is seeing the return of their Season 1 tier, which for the 2 set includes a stacking damage bonus to Wrath and Starfire, and for the 4 set means a massive buff to Star Surge damage when entering Eclipse. This is a big deal, considering this season's tier was pretty mediocre for Balance Druid anyway, and was more or less a quality of life improvement rather than a big damage buff. It's possible that the returning tier set could mean more experimentation with single target damage talents that buff Wrath and Starfire. There are a lot of potential stacking modifiers here that could actually make Boomkin damage quite scary and even more unpredictable. The 4 set is where things really get interesting, since the big buff to Star Surge will make Balance Druid Burst even deadlier, and we fully expect to see the continued dominance of comps like Boomy DH and Boomy Rogue, which revolve around doing big goes. So with all this in mind, Balance Druid will actually be our first spec going into the big winner category. Next up is Devastation Evoker, and here the news is a bit grim. Evokers are seeing the return of their Season 2 tier set, which performs really well in PvE thanks to its sustained damage buff, but doesn't quite hit the mark in PvP. The current Devastation Evoker tier set is really strong, giving them more burst damage and feeding them essence burst procs, which is one big reason why this spec exploded in popularity this season. We've all been hit to the face by back-to-back -back disintegrates, which can easily melt an entire health bar with good RNG, but next season this probably won't happen nearly as much. So unfortunately, because their tier set is strictly worse, Devastation will be the first spec going into the loser category. Now, for all of you Preservation of Ochre mains, we have great news. The iconic Season 1 tier set is making its return, which includes increased reversion healing and those juicy instant cast living flames. During the early days of this expansion, this single tier set defined Preservation of Ochre by dramatically smoothing out their healing rotation. At the end of Season 3, Preservation was already looking like one of the best healers, slotting into many top tier 3v3 comps as the premier offensive healer, and even making a lot of ground in solo shuffle after multiple buffs. Because of all this, Preservation will actually be our second spec going into the big winner category. Up next is Survival Hunter, who is seeing the return of their Season 2 tier set, which includes multiple damage modifiers on Mongoose Bite, which even now can hit pretty hard, so you can kind of guess that this is probably a good thing. In fact, when we reached out to Bickmax asking to review next season's tier, he seemed pretty happy. Now, we don't expect these buffs to make Survival suddenly feel god tier, since it will continue to be one of the more difficult specs to play, but will definitely be an improvement and a perfect complement to Survival's insane consistent damage output. So as you might have guessed, we will be putting Survival Hunter in the winner category. Moving on, we have Fire Mage, which will be seeing the return of their Season 2 tier set, which includes some pretty sweet Phoenix Flame synergies. Here, the 4 set is quite appealing since it basically gives mages a free Phoenix Flame that will hit 100% harder, leading to stronger and more frequent burst windows. This season's tier set was a bit underwhelming, and based on the feedback we got from Rank 1 mages, this returning set bonus will make the spec feel more fluid. After the recent buffs to Fire in late Season 3, things are looking really good going into the next season. So with buffs hot off the press and a strong tier set, we're putting Fire Mage in the winner category. Next up is Windwalker Monk, 
who was lucky enough to actually get their best tier set going into the next season. Both the two set and four set feed into one another, resulting in big Fist of Fury and rising Sun Kick damage, which will make Windwalker Burst even scarier. Currently, Windwalker is already one of the best melee specs for both 3v3 and solo shuffle, thanks to its impressive damage spike during Serenity, and we fully expect this tier set to make that spike even higher, which could result in some insane one-shots unless something gets nerfed. So not only do we think Windwalker is a winner, but it's probably one of the biggest winners in the tier set lottery. Up next is Holy Paladin, who will be getting their Season 2 tier set once again. This means having a higher crit chance on Holy Shock and more healing and Holy Power generation from Holy Prism, which both sound really good. Now, this will mean the loss of this season's set, of course, which gave Holy Paladin some dispel protection, but an increased crit chance on Holy Shock means more infusion of light procs and even better mana. On top of this, Holy Prism being strong once again means Holy Paladins should feel less overall downtime in their healing rotation. So despite the loss of some dispel protection, we think Holy Paladin will be a winner next season. Unfortunately, our next spec is not so lucky. Shadow Priest will be getting its Season 2 tier set again, which will result in slightly bigger Mind Blasts and more damage from Devouring Plague and Shadowy Apparitions, which aside from the DP buff, seem a bit underwhelming. The loss of this season's tier will be a big issue for Shadow Priest since it gave them so much burst through the combo of Mind Spike and Catharsis, and since the new 4 set will revolve around Shadowy Apparitions, we could definitely see Shadow struggling in a meta that is so burst heavy. So if it wasn't obvious, Shadow will be another loser going into next season. Sticking on theme, we have another spec getting a tier set downgrade. Resto Shaman will be seeing the return of its Season 1 set bonus, which includes a bonus crit chance and even a slight increase to its crit modifier. These were exceptionally good in Mythic Plus because they gave the spec more damage but fall a bit flat in PvP. This season, Resto Shamans actually had one of the best tier sets out of any healer, so seeing the return of a tier set that revolves around healing stream totem is a massive loss, considering most players can just kill the totem and remove the set bonus entirely. Overall, Shamans will probably lose a significant amount of healing with the loss of the Season 4 tier set, so unless there's any additional tuning, healing output could become a serious issue once again. So unfortunately, unless there's any tuning, we are expecting Resto Shaman to suffer next season and will be our first big loser. Next up is Destro Warlock, who had one of the best set bonuses this season, but will be seeing the return of its Season 1 tier set, which gives some bonus crit chance and even a small bump to its crit multiplier. Now on paper, this is a totally fine tier set, and could possibly mean leaning into a big Chaos Bolt build, but remember that Season 3 gave Destro one of the most broken set bonuses of all time, thanks to Immolate Ticks having a chance to reset the cooldown of Dimensional Rift. This made Destro damage extremely unpredictable and was a huge reason why the spec was so dominant in 3v3 and Solo Shuffle. Despite this, we don't think Destro Warlock will be significantly worse, which is why we're going to place it in the loser tier. Moving on, we have Arms Warrior, who is getting its Season 1 tier set. This one is a bit interesting, since both the 2 and 4 piece offer a nice overall boost to single target damage, while this season's tier was primarily a buff to AoE, so overall this isn't a very clear win or loss in either direction. If you enjoy the playstyle of Rend and like doing spread pressure, then you might be a bit sad, but if you want to see the return of those big Arms Warrior one-shots, then you should be excited. Because this tier set gives such mixed signals, Arms Warrior will be our first spec in the neutral category. Fury Warrior will be facing a similar dilemma, as it will be getting its Season 2 tier set once again. Just like Arms Warrior, this gives a flat damage increase to a core rotational spell, which on paper means better consistent damage compared to the current set bonuses, which revolve around Odin's Fury. So here, the dilemma is slightly different. If you like the playstyle of Season 3 Fury Warrior and having stronger burst windows, then you might be a bit upset, but if you value higher consistent damage, then you should be happy. So again, we have some mixed signals, which means Fury Warrior will also go in the neutral tier. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why we haven't mentioned your spec. Everyone else will be keeping the same tier set from Season 3. And if you fall on this list we have up now, it means you shouldn't expect much to change outside of class tuning. Some specs had game-defining tier sets in 10.2, including Resto Druids, whose set bonus reflected the new Grove Guardian spell they got during their redesign, and Druid players seem to like this, which is why it's making its return. Arcane Mages are also seeing the return of their iconic tier set, which turns Arcane Missiles into a laser light show. Other specs might have missed the mark on tier set voting, including Assassination Rogues, who didn't even use this season's 4 set bonus. So if you are on the list we have up right now and you like the current design of your set bonus, then you should be pretty happy going into season 4. The biggest meta change we are expecting is the rise of Preservation of Ochre. Once again, this healer was already performing well in Season 3 and is getting a phenomenal tier set next patch. Evokers will also be able to wear their legendary once again in Arena because there will be an upgrade token to increase this item level. If you were lucky enough to have this in your bags already, then be ready to dust it off. 
Any legendary axe user will also be able to upgrade their weapons too, and we will even see the return of some potential PvE gear from the first two raid tiers. But don't panic since PvP and crafted gear will still be best in slot in 99% of cases. Alright guys, before we wrap up, we wanted to remind you that SkillCap.com is the best place to rank up in Season 4. We've got everything you need, including over 250 hours worth of videos and some sweet Discord perks, including monthly VOD reviews, one-on-one -on -one support, and access to an amazing UI profile. Everything is backed up by a rating game guarantee because we promise you will rank up. Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the links below for an exclusive discount offer. For now, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.